<laughs> Have you heard common phrases such as think big, think positive, or think differently? Research shows that with more than 6,000 thoughts per day, so what we think and therefore what guides us truly matters. For the last couple of years, I was on the search for what guided my own decisions, for what some of my core beliefs were that I could share with my family, friends, colleagues, clients, and you today. I hope my reflections can serve you as a gift, inspire you to define your own core beliefs, help you achieve your goals as you shape your world. My name is Markus Hammer. I'm a leader in learning and development, book author on resource productive operations, and as you can see, a proud husband and father of two boys. My father was an engineer, and I followed his footsteps to study at the Technical University. I was curious to understand the fundamental principles of how to make processes more efficient and help the environment. And since then, I spent my career helping companies to change and improve their operations. This includes essential things such as meeting customer needs, um, increasing service quality, um, delivering products on time, and also reducing costs. But equally important, sustainability and resource productivity, helping companies to find new ways to consume fewer resources, produce less waste and pollution, and move towards more sustainable and circular business models. I found a few core beliefs to be hugely valuable, and today I'm going to share four of them with you. Whether you think about resource productive operations, learning and development, or life, every one of these core beliefs comes down to people, or in other words, the human factor. The first core belief I want to share with you today is think lean, or how we can all achieve more from less. In my first full-time job at the Procter & Gamble manufacturing plant for industrial perfumes, I had the chance to learn everything about lean through the integrated working system, which like the famous Toyota production system, is a comprehensive methodology for improvement. But I learned some lessons the hard way. In my first project, I only focused on the technical aspects of reducing cycle stock in perfumes production. What I didn't realize was that the success of my project hinged on non-technical things such as competing for team resources with the colleague sitting in the very same office room with me, or how important stakeholder management was to keep my project being supported by both operators and management. And what ended up happening was painful. My project uh, was delayed in favor of the project of my colleague. At that point in time, I realized there's so much more than just the process itself. And later, as a consultant, I've seen hundreds of people fall into that very same trap, only asking about systems, tools, methods, when in reality, most of their challenges are about people and change management. So when I had the chance to dig deeper into Lean and toured Japanese companies, I learned that Lean is more like a people-centric culture. Real great Lean companies give their employees the skills to think Lean and do their jobs better through experimenting, tweaking, learning all the time. And they reward and celebrate those efforts. So with thinking Lean and through people, can we achieve more from less? Think trade-offs 
is my second core belief. And here it's ideally about less, but better. Where it's decisions in life, like shall we get married, which took us eight years, or decisions in business, they always involve trade-offs. What decisions are you wrestling with right now? When I was serving clients, I had to travel heavily. And this was driven by multiple projects at the same time, and also by the fact that we had settled on Sao Miguel Island on the Azores, a beautiful place, and also the birthplace of our two sons. In 2015, we had to make a trade-off decision. Should we stay or should we relocate to Austria? We had to weigh up all the growth opportunities for every one of us in our family with everything we had to give up there. And we ended up moving, but the frenzy of traveling continued for me. And I still vividly remember in one week going full circle, starting in Austria, traveling via Frankfurt to a business meeting in Oslo, continuing via Tokyo to a two days workshop in New Zealand, only to come back via San Francisco to Europe. As you can imagine, certainly not the right balance for body and mind. And I had to take another trade-off decision. Should I continue going in circles or should I take some time off? And I took a leave of absence to do my PhD in my early 40s. And it was a great experience to be able to focus on just one thing, one goal, and nothing else for a while, a true less but better decision for me. In industry, we face trade-offs all the time, like the earlier example, competing for team resources. When I was writing my first book, I was spending a lot of time thinking through the trade-offs between resource consumption, waste generation, and uh, profitability in industrial operations. Questions like, should factories run their processes faster, produce and sell more product? Or should they focus on yield improvements, reducing energy and material consumption and cost at constant throughput? People find it hard to navigate those trade-offs. And understanding the optimal operating point requires con continuous decision-making between all the internal and external factors. Increasingly, operators get the help of big data analytics and artificial intelligence when they make those decisions. So the question is, how can we help people to think trade-offs, make decisions, and what skills do they need? It should be clear by now that people and also becoming more self-aware matters most. So my third core belief is think personal. It's all about people. I was always good in school and efficiently made my way through the education system. But when I look back, it did not build many of the skills I later on needed. And its one-size-fits-all approach is no longer fully fit for purpose. And therefore, in my learning and development role, one of the biggest efforts is around think personal, or in other words, learner centricity. We strive to change the logic from pushing training onto learners, like in school, to learners intentionally pulling for the learning opportunities they need to address their individual skills needs. There's also another change that is required, which is thinking more holistically about learning and development, as most of the actual learning happens through experiences on the job. And in the field, the 70-20-10 principle is widely known, which means 70% of the learning happens through experience on the job, 20% socially, and only 10% through formal, physical, or virtual classroom training. 
Also for myself, some of the most memorable learning experiences were experiences. Um, for instance, as a student, I left Austria to study a year in Scotland. So I had to live alone for the first time in my life. Learn to understand the Scottish accent, which is really hard. Um, make new friends. Um, and also, I had the chance to meet my loving wife. So learning experiences matter. And I've spent the last 15 years on this in our capability centers and model factories. There, the biggest power of experiential learning is actually to create lasting memories, what I call from to experiences, where participants get the chance to experience an unoptimized current state and have the chance to improve that process hands on. Not only is the future state that can be achieved mind blowing and so much better, but also the transformational journey as a team to get there is also fun. And these experiences, they can also be made portable through model factors in a box and also virtual reality. But there's something else. Um, think personal also includes taking care of your full self and your teams, which is my number one priority at work. Life is short and I was very lucky on March 22nd of 2016. That day I had breakfast at Starbucks at Brussels Airport. Only one hour later at that very same place, one of three bombs detonated as Brussels was attacked by terrorists that day. So think personal for me also includes being grateful for the time we have with our friends, family, team members, and also for the beautiful places um, in nature, like our small cottage at the lake. There's one last core belief I want to share with you. And looking ahead in the next few years, we see the most profound shift in our economic model since the Industrial Revolution. Companies will need to accelerate their journey towards environmental and social sustainability by moving away from the linear approach to resource consumption to more circular, also called cradle-to-cradle -cradle business models. So we all will need to start to think circular as there's only one planet Earth with finite resources. And this transition to more circular business models requires companies to think about the products they make as resources for the future. And they need to find new ways to optimize the value they generate out of those resources through multiple life cycles. To capture their full potential, circular economy concepts require the collaboration across the entire value chain, from the design of materials that are safe and easy to recycle, to the design of products that support repairs, upgrades, disassembly, remanufacturing, to the development of an ecosystem of providers that support our services. People are crucial, both in business and society, to enable the circular economy. So we all will need to think circle. To conclude, in this fast changing world where technology and new ways of working demand new answers, our thoughts and our core beliefs, the human factor matters more than ever. I've shared four of my core beliefs with you today. Think lean, think trade-offs, think personal and think circular. And now, 
Now it's time for you to define your own core beliefs as you shape your world. Be kind, be true to yourself and let your core beliefs guide you. Thank you.